All right, good morning. 7.34, as you can tell, I'm not Jason DeRosha or Heather Brown. They are out at the fair this morning, so I am here for your CBS in Minnesota's morning update. Grab that coffee and let's get you up to speed on the news and the weather. Okay, well, you probably woke up to the pitter patter of rain this morning, and that rain is going to continue till noon. Then we're going to see isolated showers throughout the day. There will be some dry moments on and off if you're going to head out to the state fair by eight o'clock still muggy and a little bit drier. Now let's talk about this. As you can see, Jason is not doing the CBS in morning update. That is because he is en route to the fair. I just saw him. He's got his poncho on. He's ready to go. And what is he going to do? He's going to do what he does best. He's going to eat. He actually had 15 different fair foods yesterday. So we want to know what he should eat next. We want to hear from you. Give us comments on what he should put in his mouth. You know he's good at that. We want to have those comments on Facebook. You can comment here. We're going to read through them in a few minutes. And hey, he told me earlier this morning, I'm a man of the people. I'm going to eat what they tell me to eat. So here's your chance. All right, well, serious news here. President Joe Biden is vowing revenge against those responsible for an attack killing 13 U.S. soldiers and more than 70 Afghans in the Kabul airport. Flights out of the country are continuing today, but U.S. military commanders say that they are on alert for more violence by the Islamic State. Yesterday was the deadliest day for the U.S. military in more than a decade. We will not forgive we will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. You. We will not be deterred by terrorists. We will not let them stop our mission. We will continue the evacuation. Thousands of Afghans are hoping to get out of the country by the end of the month, with many living in makeshift camps outside of the airport. The Taliban controls the outer perimeter, and the U.S. has asked them to clamp down as more attacks from ISIS could be coming. President Biden has ordered U.S. flags at half staff across the country until August 30th. 1,100 Minnesota National Guard troops are in Afghanistan. Some are deployed at the Kabul airport. It is not known yet, though, if any Minnesota Guard members were among the troops that were hurt or killed. The Minnesota Guard soldiers came from a base in Kuwait. The troops are securing vital sectors of Hamid Karzai International Airport and providing humanitarian assistance to those trying to leave the country. The Delta surge is rising so high that we're seeing more cases than we have seen in seven months now. The U.S. is now averaging about 150,000 new cases per day. That is the most we have seen since January. And Minnesota is seeing upwards of 1,000 new cases every day, which is keeping up with our positivity rate that we had at about 5%, which is the caution line right there. Hundreds of students at one Minnesota school district are in quarantine, affected by those numbers just Five days into the school year, they are at this point. The superintendent of Albert Lee Area School says 290 students were exposed to COVID-19 during the first week, and they are in quarantine. The district also has 36 positive cases. Masking was only recommended at the start of the year, but now face coverings are required for grades 6 through 12. The Guthrie Theater in downtown Minneapolis plans to require proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test, and they are saying masking is mandatory for everyone. That is how they're going to go about starting their season up when they start shows again next month. The Guthrie says that ticket holders who don't meet the requirements or get sick, they can easily get a refund or do an exchange. More Minnesotans are getting tested for COVID-19 as well. Data from the health department shows that testing dipped in the middle of the summer, but now, as expected, weekly testing numbers are almost as high as they were at the beginning of May. In response to that, the state is opening some new sites, trying to meet that demand for tests. One will be at the Roy Wilkins Auditorium. That is in downtown St. Paul. It opens on Tuesday. The other site is going to be open on Monday down the street from Bloomington City Hall. You can find all the details on WCCO.com. While the rain puts a damper on some state fair activities, most of Minnesota needs as much rain as we can get. I know if you were like me, you woke up thinking this is a good sound. We need this sound. 
The U.S. drought monitor released its latest map yesterday. The extreme drought or light red area you see right there that expanded last week. That means it now covers more of the northeast Minnesota area where the Greenwood fire is burning. It has destroyed dozens of homes, cabins, the outbuildings of northeastern Minnesota, and the state's largest wildfire is at nearly 26,000 acres. Serious stuff right there. So far, none of it is contained right now. Officials brief Governor Tim Watts and Senator Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith yesterday. They say that the drought has created tinderbox conditions, and sometimes rain doesn't always help. Uh, one of our tactics is to remove the fuel in front of the fire on the on the east side and this rain of course inhibits us from doing that so we're kind of um, in our action you would think rain would be the best thing we could get but timing of the rain is, is also critical to our operation we're expecting this to go until snowfall so we're trying to just pace ourselves in order to let's just call it finish the marathon in addition to the Greenwood fire, the command center is watching the John Elk fire. They say it's a potential time bomb burning about 1500 acres in the boundary waters right now. They worry it could spread quickly, impacting the Gunflint Trail. Nearly 11,000 people had to be evacuated at the state fair grandstand last night thanks to lightning. But Miranda Lambert fans did get to come back and see the show. Fair organizers also had to cancel several shows on free entertainment stages thanks to that weather right there. You can see it was coming down. Now, tonight at the Grandstand Big Show, Marin Morris starts at 7.30. Tickets still available. They start at $40. There are nearly 30 new foods to tempt your taste buds at the fair this year, and some of it comes from a vendor that we know pretty well. Sharing the waffle love, yes. The waffle love Nordic waffles is serving two new flavors, a chicken and macaroni waffle and an ice cream. I scream waffle sandwich. OK, founder Stein Ashlyn actually started selling her waffles at a gas station in Norway 18 years ago. Now you'll find her staff meeting sweet and salty treats at the West End Market. Speaking of food, look at that right there. Wendy's is giving their fries a makeover. Mm -hmm. The fast food chain says, hey, they're changing it up. The new version is going to retain more heat inside the fry and keep its crispiness longer. The company's president says that the secret to the upgraded fry is in the batter that they use. He says the fry will look similar to the one that we know well, but this one will taste different. Wendy's has been researching the upgrade for the past four years and they are rolling it out. Customers will be able to order the new fries next month. This next item might raise some eyebrows. PepsiCo has introduced a flaming hot Mountain Dew. They describe it as a unique blend of a spicy and classic sweet citrus flavor. The new soda comes in a fiery red can to match the flaming hot brand. It will be available at the end of the month, but only through Mountain Dew's virtual store. And there, it's a limited time thing, so you can only do it while supplies last. An Australian farmer recently created a heartfelt display with the help of his animals, and this work is going viral for very good reason. Look at this right here. The white specks are sheep, and the farmer managed to herd them into a heart shape by laying out the design of the feed. The farmer did it. This is really special to honor his aunt who had recently passed away. This was a tribute to her. He was unable to go to her funeral, so he created this farewell instead. The farmer admitted it did take a few tries, but as you can see, he really got it to work beautifully right there. All right, well, we're going to go back to today's talker. We asked you what foods you want Jason to try out at the fair. I mean, Jason's the food guy. We gave you a chance to kind of tell them what to eat. Here we go. This is our first comment right here. Joanne Spence, walleye on a stick. Very classic Minnesota recommendation. Love it, Joanne. What about Becca? Okay, Becca said, do they still have deep fried olives? I had them when I was there five years ago and you were pregnant, so you were extra hungry. Appreciated that salty flavor. Oh yeah, they were delicious. Totally agree. One of my top three favorite fair foods. Uh, yeah, so we need to tell Jason, olives, 
walleye on a stick, and now corn on the cob. It's a must, Jamie. Yes, that is a classic. I'm sure Jason will be digging into that. Alligator, okay, Kimberly, up in the ante here. You want things to get a little weird, okay. Well, Jason is definitely an adventurous eater, so we are going to suggest alligator for him. Good call. Blackened pork chop on a stick, Bradley Stapleton. That's your recommendation for Jason. We're gonna have to pass all these on to him. Okay, that sounds delicious. Cheese curds, Kathleen, yes. When in Rome, upper Midwest, dairy part of the country. I think those cheese curds are a must as well. Okay, Darla, okay. Darla Black here saying, a bucket of sweet Martha chocolate chip cookies, a bucket? and all the milk you can drink at the milk stand. And I have to tell you, um, he ate a 15 things yesterday. So today we're all like, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? He said he can do it, so we'll see. I mean, that's quite a challenge, a bucket of cookies. All right. Well, we thank you so much for being with us this morning on CBS in Minnesota. We are your local streaming news source. Thank you for watching, and we will pass this on to Jason.